excuse me, I am too busy being appalled that there were aliens in a movie called Cowboys and Aliens. Don't they know that every western needs to be exactly like the searchers? I haven't been this offended at a movie since Snakes on a Plane was about snakes on a plane. Anyway, so what movie are we talking about this week? Violent Shit 3. Of course there's a Violent Shit 3. The fact that there was a Violent Shit 2 was a big enough stretch. Might as well make a franchise out of it. Alright, so let's talk about this clusterfuck of a movie. Dear Cinema Snub, I would like to point out that your decision to review Violent Shit 3 goes against your cutoff date of 1995, as Violent Shit 3 was clearly made in the year 1999. P.S. TARDIS! Oh, fuck, you got me. Okay, I'll tell you what. If a movie is made after 95 and is a sequel or even a remake to something that I've already done, it's fair game. But if not, still not doing it. In this case, I've already talked about the first two fucking movies, so why not touch upon V... V... VS3? Really? They're going the HP7 ATD HP2 3D route with this? Abbreviated titles make even smart movies sound stupid. Luckily, this thing is neither smart nor a movie. What's going on here? Sounds like something really exciting is going on behind the lens cap. This is now the fourth Andreas Schnoss movie I've sat through, and I can safely say that the easiest one to watch was Zombie 90, due in part to its hilarious dubbing. Special Forces! So what are we getting here? Dubbing or subtitles that may or may not have been created by me? God damn, the motor quit. Fuck the motor, and fuck my nephew. He should die. Fuck. Shitty dubbing. Really, really shitty dubbing. Hey guys, this looks good over here. Drop the anchor. Did you hear that? Oh yeah, this sounds like it's being filmed outside on a boat. Sounds more like they're doing their recording in an empty dining hall. And to make matters worse, I'm pretty positive the dubbers are just making shit up. The trouble is, this starts to make a shit on one another. Sometimes we shit on others. Like my nephew, who put us in this piece of shit. Shit, I'm shittily stuck out here on this shitty shitting boat in the middle of the shitting ocean, and shit only knows where the shit we are. Shitter. And they don't even get the right voice type to do the dubbing. You're not here for a beauty contest, so fucking hurry up. Yeah, I believe this 50-year-old man has the voice of a 25-year-old hipster. Then again, everyone else sounds like this. No human sign anywhere. Yeah, welcome to the island of Dr. Moreau. Fuck Dr. Moreau. Possibly because, I don't know, it's the same fucking douchebag doing all the voices? As we see, these three souls without a voice get stranded on a desert island. I've got to give it props. So far, it has the most plot in anything I've ever seen in one of these violent shit movies. You reach a point where you just puke at each other. Okay, you can't have a fucking narration over two guys who have the same voice. I don't know which one of them is doing the narrating. After they get surrounded by the others from Lost, they're quickly taken away. But that's okay. This is where we get introduced to Mr. Echo. Or the opening credits. The hell? Are they subliminally trying to get me to watch Cannibal Ferox? I've already had about enough of this violent shit 3 or uh, zombie doom. Oh, what's wrong, video stores? Afraid to use the word shit on the box cover? It's not like that word has made up most of the movie's dialogue. Holy shit! And if people don't know it's really called Violent Shit 3, they may get confused by not knowing it's a sequel. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you're safe. This movie has such terrible continuity that I'm surprised Chuck Cunningham wasn't in the first film. The hostages are taken to a uh, butcher shitter training camp? I guess even the butcher shitters are into LARPing. 
The whole island is apparently made up of violent shit cosplayers, and I suppose there's worse things they could cosplay as. Wake up! I have a bad feeling about this. Hmm, me too, Hayden. You're gonna be attacked by a Nexu Arena beast any second. At least the dubber got out a full sentence this time, instead of just cursing while trying to come up with something for these characters to say. That's piss! Shit. This character got off pretty easy, though. He went for the brain surgery option instead of watching this movie. If only I made that choice. <laughs> what? I don't know how much I would trust Dr. Adolf Schittler here to give me a lobotomy. Unbelievable. Dr. Genius, are you there? What do they want to get? Dr. Genius, are you on? God damn, just when it started to get so important and interesting. No, no, no. I'm watching this movie, too. And nothing is happening. A commotion goes on outside as they await their leader, the Meister. Yes, the Meister. That's the making of a great horror film, when your villain's name could be a nickname from Rob Schneider on SNL. Just what we need. I feel so sick I could puke. Buckets full. Okay, seriously, first you have a voiceover in front of two characters with the same voice, then you have it come back when none of those characters are on screen. Again, I don't know who is talking. I also don't know which one the Meister is supposed to be. Is it this Vernon Wells looking motherfucker, or this quiet man in the throne who looks like he cooked a pizza on his face? Also, why are they shooting some of this movie like it's a Jonestown documentary? It's really distracting when some parts of the movie are shot like a fucking snuff film, and the rest of it is... well... <coughs> the shitters bring out some more prisoners to... Oh, oh no! What's gonna happen here? You know, in the original violent shit, a guy crawled into the disemboweled body of Jesus and then gave birth to a son. Four guys getting their heads chopped off? Not that shocking. Hail the Meister! Hail the Meister! Wait, is Schittler here the doctor from Zombie 90? Well, that can't be, because clearly he should have the voice of a 70s blaxploitation star. And after that thing crashed, this place was full of special forces, you know what I'm saying? The best part of this scene, though, is when this extra directs his daughter not to look at the camera. What's this, another execution scene? Why not? We haven't seen one of those in five seconds. Terminate them! Do it! Well, at least it's not CGI gore. What a fucking sad state we're in when modern day computer infested horror films could learn something from the violent shit movies. One thing that I've been wondering about is if Carl the Butcher, the killer from the other two movies, is even in this fucking thing. But, according to IMDb, he is. If you read the synopsis on there, apparently Conan the Shitter here is Carl the Butcher, and Old Man Nameless is Carl Sr. I could blame the dubbing for calling him something different than he's been called in the other films, but regardless of the dubbing, I should be able to tell by looking at your villain if he's the same villain you've been using in the previous films, especially when all of the other villains here, besides Carl the Butcher dress like Carl the Butcher. So one of the hostages mouths off to Carl the Meister and... You spit in the villain's face. What did you think was gonna happen? No! Hey, it's the first time in the movie where the dubbing goes along with what the actor really said. So what's going on with Mindfucker here? Oh, is that a zombie I see? About time one of those showed up in a movie whose alternate title is Zombie Doom. 
Though he is just kinda laying there. Might as well be a futon. God damn! Senius here! Dr. Senius! Oh, his name is Dr. Senius? Even Wiley e. Coyote knows how to spell genius. The shitters decide to untie the remaining boaters and send them out into the woods with another prisoner in order to be hunted. Do you take this chance? Do you want to run? Yes, I do. Can we have one dub actor who actually gives a shit? God damn, let's go, come on. Just listen to me for a sec. Since when did you take over, Riceface? Okay, who do I root for here? The idiots in the iron masks or the racist? But we do get something here we've never seen in one of these violent shit movies. Exposition! It's not easy for me to tell the story. I fell for grace because I failed the insemination ritual. Women are, women are raped and tortured. And then these creatures created by Dr. Senius, they eat their victims alive. Oh my god, if the guy doing the exposition doesn't give a shit, then I don't give a shit. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I've never given a shit. Apparently, the origin of the island involves the kidnapping of the master's wives from Manos. Okay, when the character's lips are moving, that's when you're supposed to talk. Again, why isn't this whole movie shot like this? It'd be a terrible movie regardless, but at least the violence would look a lot more effective if it wasn't shot on the fucking Panasonic VHS cam that I probably have in my basement. Christ, even with this PXL 2000, you would get a nice grainy black and white look that would still be much better than this fucking movie. Anyway, they need to come up with a plan to escape the shitters. Too bad they don't have Ice-T, Steve Railsback, Joel McRae, or hell, even Robert Reed to help them out. But maybe they'll find some answers here at the Swan Station. I'll show you guys how fucking Boy Scouts open their hunting season. You're gonna fight them with a pine wood derby? Oh, you mean chuck spears at them, obviously. One guy gets wounded, but in this movie, as long as he isn't cut in half, I'm sure he's fine. Great stuff, ladies! You should have seen it! Really, you should have seen it! He did see it. He was only five feet away, jackass. We have to keep an eye on Mark. He's losing it. Okay. Yeah, because any minute now, he's likely to fall asleep. One of the surviving guards gets punished by the Meister. Show that moron what a fucking pain in the ass he is! Wouldn't a better one-liner be, Prove to me that he's got a spine! We finally come across some zombies who actually do something, and the makeup work on the zombies is pretty top-notch. Of course, it would be a little better if we weren't looking at them through the lens of a camera that probably shot my Christmas Eve party in 1989. A lot of the zombies get their heads pulled off very, very slowly. Easy. Easy there. You don't want to mess up his makeup now. <laughs> We bought a blood geyser, so goddamn it, we're gonna geyser some fucking blood. The party gets split up, but they do come across more people to help them fight. After being exiled from the count, Stone and I swore bloody revenge. Now we're back like the phoenix rising from the ashes. <laughs> yeah, okay. These dub actors are about as Asian as Mel Blanc. Hopefully, the two sailors will be okay on their own. Hey, surprise! <laughs> Oh shit, they got him right in the theme song. Look at the blue sky. One could think we were on vacation. Nice thought, huh? This is too much dialogue for these guys. Go back to your typical lines. Shit, shit, shit. Not that it matters because there's still a shitload more gore effects the director spent money on. <laughs> My god, they were excessive to death. 
Now that our leads are dead, can I quit watching this now? Oh, right, these guys. I really don't give a shit about them, or the fucking villains. Can you hear that? Can you hear him die? Well, that was an awkward shot. Funny how this movie splits a head a lot better than it splits a screen. Wait, there's ninjas now? Whoa, 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 whoa. I am not watching ninjas fight in a forest unless it involves Pierre Kirby or Godfrey Ho. And I think there's a way to fix that. three decide to infiltrate the camp by dressing up like the ninjas. Good thing they sewed their costumes back together. And what follows is a lot of fighting. And a lot of fighting. And shooting. And shooting. And shooting. One of the main characters dies, but so what? Yes, remember that you are a fighter, something you've been doing for the past half hour. It's amazing how much more boring this movie is with a story than Violent Shit 1 and 2 were without a story. Beware Children at Play had it right. If you're gonna shoot a long, excessive scene of mass murder, make sure it involves children or I won't remember it. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's still a terrible idea! Dr. Senius even gets his comeuppance. <laughs> Oh shit, what's he gonna do without his dummy's nose? He gets shot up, but don't worry, his head is safe for the sequel, They Saved Shitler's Brain. I like this part where one of the ninjas jumps through the fire, while the other says, yeah, fuck that, I'm taking the entryway. Well, that was kinda lame. Did you run out of body splitting effects? Or do you just have to save everything for the final showdown? You know nothing about anything! You will swallow your own intestines! Die! No, you bastard! <sighs> Not even Thomas Ian Griffith or Cynthia Rothrock would say these lines. At least we only have the main bad guys here left, and. Oh, god damn it! I don't care! I so don't fucking care! Good to know that this fight scene takes place inside of a Film Ventures credit sequence. After that ninja dies, the Meister gets punched through the throat, but... Oh, yawn. Let's knock that up a notch by sticking a grenade in his mouth. A grenade whose explosion consists of bits of flashback footage. But one exploding corpse isn't enough for the finale, so let's blow up another motherfucker! <laughs> And now all the shitters are dead, and everyone is happy. But nothing lasts forever. <laughs> Only love has a fit. Thus ends Zombie Doom. Er, okay, so it's calling itself Violent Shit 3 now? Make up your fucking mind, movie! End of trilogy? Well, thank fucking God for that, except that there's still a fourth fucking movie. Well, there was my first solo foray into something made after 95, and you know what? Not worth it. <laughs> so not fucking worth it. Interesting how a movie that contains both zombies and ninjas contains just as little use of the two as the movie Zombie vs. Ninja. Unlike the first two movies in the series, Violent Shit 3 does have some kind of plot, whereas the other two were just stag reels of death sequences. But the characters here still suck. These three main characters are killed off two-thirds of the way in, and this guy dies shortly after, so by by the end, we're supposed to root for someone we've only seen for 15 minutes. Who fucking cares? But hey, maybe that's the point. Maybe I'm not supposed to fucking care. Hey, gore effects! Ooh.
Maybe we'll find some hot Amazon babes. Give me those Amazons.